This video is to demonstrate an underwater view of the combat side stroke. The technique we're going to use is called a sculling technique. This technique is one that you will learn in the prep course, but before we talk about this technique, I want to cover your breathing. When you're swimming, you should swim to your breathing. In other words, try not to do any breath holding. It would be the same thing as every length in a pool, if you're holding your breath on your transitions or your turns, and you hold your breath for two to three seconds would be the same thing as every 30 seconds on a mile and a half run to hold your breath for two or three seconds. That sounds pretty ridiculous, and of course it is, because if you do that, you're going to be fatiguing your body. When you're doing running and you're doing swimming, it's a cardio exercise. So if you're ever holding your breath, you're not getting a good air exchange, thus you're going to fatigue your body quicker. So that's one very important aspect to be aware of. So as you're swimming, stay relaxed. Exhale when your face is underwater, a complete exhalation, so that when your face is out of the water, you're no longer exhaling and you're just taking your inhalation. The next important points of performance that we need to talk about is having length and balance in the water. Length is when you're reaching out as far as you can for each stroke. If you try to short stroke it, you're not going to be as efficient in the water. You can only swim as fast as your best technique so you must be efficient in the water. The other aspect to do this is to make sure you have good balance. If you press your chest downward, it will bring your hips to the surface. You might see somebody swimming in the water where they got their head high in the water or out of the water. When they do this, their body's gonna sink. Anytime you bring your head up out of the water, your body's gonna sink, thus creating a lot of drag. And you're not gonna be swimming as effectively as the person that is swimming with his shoulders, hips, and feet close to the surface. So next what I want to talk about are the points of performance. There are actually three steps for performing the combat side stroke. The first two is your form of thrust. Your thrust comes from your scissor kick. A scissor kick is when the top leg goes forward and the back leg goes back. You thrust them together like a pair of scissors and in the video here you see them doing a flutter kick. That's another option. A lot of people think it'll help propel you through the water quicker but if you have a very good strong scissor kick then you can do less flutter because the more fluttering you do in between each scissor kick the more fatigued you're possible to become. So first form of thrust your scissor kick. Second form of thrust is your upper arm pull. When you're pulling here that's your second form of thrust and you pull all the way down your body line. The third step is where you're going to do your inhalation. So from your kick through your first arm pull, you're exhaling. When you do your front arm pull, you bring it straight down below your body line, and then when it's straight under you, you bring it back up, and that's the completion of the stroke. At that time, you'll complete your inhalation, and now you're opening your legs and thrusting your arms forward while doing your scissor kick and starting the process over again. So again, watching a video, it's like this. Thrust, pull, glide, and hill. Thrust, pull, glide, and hill. Next, what we're going to demonstrate is how to do a proper push off and a turn off of the wall. The proper push off I'm going to demonstrate here in this video will keep you shallow in the water and allow you to turn and get into the stroke as quickly as possible. The reason for this is if you rely too heavily on porpoising and doing double arm pulls underwater, granted that will move you along a little quicker, it's going to make quite a bit of difference when you go from a 25 yard pool to a 50 meter pool like you're going to be using at the prep course and in the schoolhouse. You're going to find out that your swim times are going to be worse because you have less push offs on the wall. So you want to do a quick transition. And the way you can do that is to stay shallow, exhaling continuously when you're underwater, and when your head's out of the water, you're doing an inhalation, as you're going to see here. He's going to grab the wall, exhaling into it. When his head's out of the water, he's going to do nothing but an inhale, put his feet on the wall, push off, going flat or neutral in the water, which allows him to go either right or left to start his stroke. And as you can see, he goes immediately into the stroke. A nice, easy, quick transition. And the other thing that he's not doing is holding his breath. 
A lot of people, when they porpoise or do double arm pulls, they're holding their breath and they're also fatiguing their body. So that's something else to be aware of. Now let's take a look at the stroke itself. What you want to do is try to develop your stroke so that you're going to be able to do an easy transition into swimming with fins later on. That's why he's swimming on his side. The crown of his head must remain in the water at all times. Your lower ear must remain in the water at all times. You want to make sure that your hips are close to the surface, which will help bring your feet up. If at any time your head's coming out of the water, your body's going to sink and create drag. Notice here he's swimming on his side. That's an easy transition for when you go to the ocean with fins. If you go from your stomach to your side, that's not going to be an easy transition to go to swimming on your side. So here he had his good push off. Notice his lead arm. He's reaching out as far as he can and then pulling down directly underneath his body. If you're pulling out to the side with your lead arm, it's going to make you go from side to side. So make sure on your lead arm pull after you glide, you're pulling straight down. Now let's talk about the scissor kick. There's two options. You can do a scissor kick with or without a flutter kick. They're teaching to do a scissor kick and then a flutter kick in a prep course. Be aware if you do too much flutter kicking or a hard flutter kick, you could have the tendency of fatiguing your body more rapidly. So play around with it. Find what works best for you. If you can swim a swim pace of a 500 yards in, say, six minutes, and you're doing it with a very unorthodox swim stroke, like I have three of my students doing, I'm not going to change them up. What I will do is say, here's a preferred method, here's the better technique, try it. If it works for you and you master it, good on you. But if you need to go back to your unorthodox technique and it'll function in the ocean with fins on and all your gear, go for it.